you were here this past Sunday at Rocky Mountain Church, we had an awesome time of, of worship and talking through uh, what is our vision for 2024. It's, it's not a New Year's resolution. It is actually looking at how do we be obedient to Matthew 28 and then that commissional statement of, of going out and making disciples of all nations, teaching them all that Christ had taught his disciples. And the first place to start is in, in relationship, uh, one-on-one conversations, in engaging with people, having spiritual conversations. And my challenge to you is centered around this statement, just one. And, and I want us to be thinking about that one person that, that comes to mind, maybe, that you already know, or, or praying about bumping into someone and potentially God moving and you having a spiritual conversation with that individual. The challenge this year is that each one of us step out in faith and see what happens. I, I gave you some unfortunate statistics. Uh, only, only 14% of evangelical churches right now in the United States are growing. Upwards of 76 churches a week in the United States are closing. It's staggering. Sometimes really frustrating to think about. And there's this whole population of de-churched evangelicals that, that left post-COVID, haven't come back. But if asked, 54% of them would come back in community. And we know they need that. They know they need that. But they might be looking for you. To call them, shoulder tap them, ask them. On the opposite spectrum, we have a culture that's highly spiritual but hates religion. And so your next door neighbor might hate church, but that doesn't mean he or she isn't spiritual. So, so, so maybe there's some conversations that can happen this next year that God might be tilling the soil and working in their hearts and in your heart. And then there's this bringing together for gospel proclamation and fruit that could be developed. I took you this week into John chapter 4 and the interaction between the Samaritan woman and Jesus at the well in Samaria, Jacob's well. And we see Jesus sitting on this well, basically noon hour, hot, no one else is there. The woman comes, brings her bucket, wants to draw from the well, as she does probably every single day. And there's an interaction. Jesus says, woman, give me something to drink. And she's, she's a little standoffish. She doesn't know what to do because now we have a Jewish man interacting with a Samaritan woman. And culturally, religiously, that was not the norm. It wasn't acceptable. And as we walked through this, um, this interaction, there are some things that I think Jesus gives us, some, some clues perhaps, or tactics as I called them on Sunday, that can help us when we interact with people that are spiritual and that are interested in talking about deep longings in their heart. And the first thing is availability. We need to be strategically available. Put, putting ourselves in places where uh, maybe multiple needs interact. In this case, you find two people, Jesus having traveled and is very, very tired, he's thirsty, the woman needs water, and so where do they find themselves? At the well, a common need, a common interest. That's a really good place to start to have a relationship. The water physically brought them together. It's fantastic. And then a relationship is established. And, and you see from verses 4 all the way through 15, this interaction between Jesus and this woman, being a Samaritan woman, she understood the Pentateuch. She would have known. And that's why she makes references to the Old Testament saying, yeah, we, we know that the Messiah is supposed to come. And she has a lot of context and understanding where she's at, Jacob's well. His servants dug it up. They drank from it. I drink from it. Jesus says, well, I have a well that's better. And she's confused by that. He raises tension a little bit. And he's relationally available. You notice how he doesn't start the conversation off with, hey, what are you doing here? 
right? Tell me your life story. What are you struggling with? No, he just starts off with asking her for a drink of water from her bucket. And and the interaction goes on where Jesus says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman says, I want that. (laughs) Sir, she says, give me this water so that I don't have to be thirsty and I don't have to be hauling water back and forth. Convenience, give me that. Now we know on Sunday, I challenge you, don't leave, don't leave people there with thinking that taking on Jesus equals convenience. That's prosperity, gospel preaching. We don't, we don't preach that here. And we see that Jesus takes the relationship to the next level and begins to show this woman the difference between the well that he has to offer and the well she's been drinking of. And we know the well that she's been drinking of is dirty water, broken relationships. She's looking for love. She's she's looking for a man to define her and give her a purpose and safety and identity. And Jesus says... The only way you're going to be able to taste of my water is to face the fact that your sin is getting in the way. And a great question we can ask people, if the relationship can get to this place, a great question we can ask is, is it working? (laughs) Are are the decisions and, and the people and the things that you love, are they satisfying you? Or have you become a slave to them? And so what is Jesus after the woman's like, hey, I want that. Give me that water. Where is that well? Jesus says to the woman, come, come, come back and bring me your husband. Right? Call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you're actually very accurate. You, you've had multiple husbands. And he's not condemning her. He's exposing a dysfunctional, idolized well. And listen, we all have them. We're all tempted every day to drink from all sorts of different wells and cisterns. But they're broken. They're toxic. And I love, in a highly spiritual culture, you guys, I love having conversations with people and probing into their longings. What are they actually hoping for, believing in? Not, not just, not theologically necessarily, but, but what are they hoping that the things that they love, the pursuits they have, the relationships they have, what are they hoping is produced from them? And what a great interaction it is to see that Jesus shows this woman in real time her need for him. And the result? <laughs> Multiplication, right? This idea of, of just one. Do you believe that if you can have a spiritual conversation with one person, potentially giving them the gospel with clarity could change multiple people, multiple families? Because that's what's happened here. The woman goes back into town and she tells everybody, hey, I think I found the Christ. I think I found the Messiah. So the Samaritans come back to the well and Jesus stays there for two days and preaches the word preaches the living water. And people are converted. Lives are changed. Cultural norms are flipped upside down. And I want to encourage you, don't live in fear and anxiety that you'll be rejected. Step out in faith and see how God could work through you and in you to redeem other hearts because he's done it for you, right? We we don't have to go to the dirty water. We can come to the living water daily and be refreshed and renewed. And that is my encouragement for you this week. I hope you can come back and worship with us on Sunday as we continue through the book of Matthew. We started that in our Advent season and we're going to march through just some great texts over the next few weeks as we look at building uh, the the ministry of Jesus Christ, the, 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 the foundations of his earthly ministry Um, And it just aligns with our vision of elevating our awe for who Christ is. 
On Sunday, you'll be able to pick up a brand new reading plan uh, that starts actually on Monday. And so you and your core groups can have those conversations and continue to build and strengthen the core of your own spiritual life. So take care, hang in there, and we'll see you on Sunday.